What's up guys? All right, so last video, I talked about my Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera that I got in the mail, and after like five times of using it, it just went out. And it was an issue with the actual body, so I returned it. But instead of doing the RMA and waiting for a return from Blackmagic, what I did was I just returned it, and I was lucky enough to check on Amazon, and they actually had one on sale at the actual manufacturer price and not an oversell price. Uh, so got it two days later, got it in, and I got my hands back on the beautiful Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera. And I have been using this nonstop, uh, part for the last week, and I have no issues with it whatsoever. Um, this is such a beautiful camera to work with. So anyways, I'm not gonna go to a review right now because I wanna still use it for like a month or so and give you my actual thoughts and use of it and what I feel about this camera when I use it for field work, interviews, or any kind of gig or even YouTube videos. So I am super happy with this camera. As soon as I got it, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do a quality comparison test with auto codex inside uh, with the ProRes as well as the Blackmagic RAW. But looking at the Blackmagic RAW, and looking at the total one, eight to one, five to one, three to one, and also looking at the constant quality of Q0 and Q5, and really see when you, especially if you're making YouTube videos, can you really see a difference? So I know YouTube puts a lot of compression on the upload. So uh, what you see on YouTube may be different from what you see in my desktop. Um, but if there's a huge difference, I'll tell you with my eyes. So let's just jump into it. I want to show you the image as well as the codec and bit right next to it. So that way you can kind of see the differences as I go through them. Okay, just so you know what I'm working with in terms of lighting in the scene, I have a 120D, I have an Aperture 120D Mark II, I have an Aperture 300, a ring light, and I'm also using a box light for backlight. Okay, so let's look at the images for comparison. What did you think? Did you see any differences or was there one that tops the other? Uh, for me personally, I like to shoot in Blackmagic 8.1. I think because it's a step better than total one and uh, I don't have to worry so much about storage space going down to like 3.1 and 5.1. Um, but going to 12.1 Blackmagic RAW, I mean, you actually get more disk space than you do in ProRes, even 4.2.2. And for me, like, yes, I can record in ProRes, make it easier for my workflow and to throw it in either Final Cut Pro or even uh, Premiere Pro and just grade from there. But I really do love color grading in DaVinci Resolve and this just gives me an excuse to like, actually have to go in there and you know use the Blackmagic RAW codecs to color grade those files. If I'm shooting it, say for instance, a short film or something like that, of course I'm gonna use maybe a Samsung external drive so that I can record a constant quality Q0 just to make sure I get that good quality, the best quality I can get from this camera. But for me, I'd be happy in shooting in Blackmagic RAW 12 one bit rate, uh, just because just I do really don't see that much of a difference uh, just for like your everyday videos. But that's it for me guys. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And besides that, my friends, I'll see you guys in the next video.